today is that one day that many have been waiting for, for years. The new Facebook Oculus VR Quest 2 standalone without a cable or PC, VR headset but with a Facebook account requirement, or in short, the Quest 2 is finally here. And I've tested it extensively over the last few days and examined it virtually from the inside out to see if four years after the introduction of consumer VR, the time is finally, finally right to enter the virtual world as a normal citizen. A little spoiler in advance, yes it is and no it isn't. But let's actually start at the very beginning. Paul Malaki was born on September 19th, 1992 in Long Beach, California and is generally considered to be the founder of Oculus VR and the inventor of the uh, Oculus... Okay, maybe not that far ahead, let's start where it gets a bit interesting for the audience. I had my first experience with the Oculus Rift sometime in 2013, with the start of the Oculus Rift Development Kit 1 Kickstarter campaign, which I followed purely out of curiosity, since I didn't have a credit card at the time. Hmm. Shortly after the release, uh, I actually bought the DK1 on eBay in mid-2014. Uh, since then, I've been fascinated by the technology. I played everything I could get my hands on, from, well, demos and titles like Strike Suit Zero, to any number of roller coaster simulators and my all-time, actually, <laughs> favorite, Eli Dangerous. Even if I couldn't read anything in the cockpit at the time, it was fascinating to be able to perceive the universe, the ship itself, and and the cockpit in an unbelievably size and, um, well, the weight for the first time. The next headset I got was the first consumer version of the Oculus Rift, the CV1. I ordered it directly from Oculus back then, there were actually no touch controllers, just the headset, a remote that I lost relatively quickly and an Xbox game controller, plus the two 6 degrees of freedom trackers for the equivalent of 750 euros. Wow, wow, wow. What a difference! Graphically, it was a completely different world. All the display with 2160 by 1200 at 90 Hz, integrated 3D audio headphones that really made the sound boom, switchable IPD settings without having to change the lenses, super comfortable head strap, and one cable without a wacky box that you could connect to the PC. Wow, the future was here. Okay, yes, with white text on the dark background, the lenses produced so-called god rays. Um, the tracking was solid, sometimes a bit sluggish. You needed actually three sensors to play room scale games and the touch controllers only came on the market one year after the release and were very expensive again. But overall, really good package. Since then, it has been my standard go-to VR device, which with I play every now and then, not as much as at the beginning, but still regularly. Well, that's my previous experience. I once had the Oculus Go on my head, rubbish. I once had the PSVR on my head, yeah, that's nice for a PlayStation VR headset. I once had the Quest 1 on my head and thought it was a dusty gimmicky headset with mobile VR gaming charm. I'm a PC VR snob, you know. And now we come to the Quest 2. For those uh, who just want to hear my brief opinion, for 350 euros it is the best money you can buy in the market headset. There is nothing that is better there, but there is still a but. And that is the following, it's not the best headset overall, it fails in some categories and is really strong in others. We will clarify which these are exactly in the detailed review, so if you want to know, stay tuned, click on the subscribe button and write me something in the comments down below please. So let's get started. The review is broken down into different categories, so that it is easier to digest. There is a lot to tell and of course I don't want to waste your time, so... This is the so-called user experience. Let me put it this way, if Quest 2 is to be your first headset, then I think you will get in at the best time you could have chosen. I don't think there has been an easier entry into the world of VR in the last 10 years than right now with the Quest 2. You don't need any external sensors, you don't need a PC, you don't need no cable connection to anything or anywhere, you just need your smartphone to activate it once and that's actually it. Play until it's empty, recharge, empty it again while playing, recharge. There's not much else to it. With Quest 2 you have a good two hours of playtime until the headset is actually empty and about three hours to watch streaming content such as films or series. 
that's all well and good. Uh, but is it comfortable to wear with all the technology in, in the front? Uh, in a nutshell, yes. Maybe it's the shape of my head or because I'm used to wearing a VR headset. But after even one and a half hours, the Quest 2 still really feels good. And in contrast to the Quest 1, the 2 is also actually 68 grams lighter. Wow. What I still really like is that the Oculus logo branding is retained after every game session on your face. The outside is all well and good, uh, but what about the inside? Uh, great question. For 350 euros you get 64 gigabytes of internal memory. Uh, the latest Qualcomm Snapdragon XR2 mobile chip that was actually specifically built for VR devices and you get a resolution of 1832 by 1920 pi, which means two times full HD. Okay, I'll say it again now, just so that you can understand it correctly. Huh? Twice full HD, one per eye. If you compare that with the currently strongest PC headset, Wealth Index, which has a resolution of 1440 by 1600, then you wonder how they actually did that. So virtually in a mobile headset without cables for significantly less money, which has integrated the technology right now. Sure, the FOV is a bit worse uh, than the Index and also like my old CV1. But then now comes the thing that actually shocked me the first time that I've sat down. If you ever wore one of the first headsets, then you probably know the so-called, well, uh, screen door effect. This is because you can see the display through a couple of lenses with magnification, thus recognize the distance between the individual pixel chains, which is generally, look. it looks like a fly screen. Mm. So far so good. You get used to it over time and the, the brain learns to ignore this effect. But the Quest 2? It feels like there's no screen door effect. Zero. Nothing. Nowhere. Magic! Yeah, devil's work. I guess we need to burn them all, but it's so sharp. You can see every little thing that was placed somewhere in the menu. Every tiny pixel in the back corners are recognized as a tree, a bird, or whatever it should be. Absolutely madness, especially if you come from a device that is actually four years old. They achieved all of this through clever technology and the single panel LCD display. This not only has advantages, but also a disadvantage, namely setting the IPDs. Uh, with a single panel display, this is more difficult in contrast to the two panels of most other headsets. And another small disadvantage that has to be emphasized, the field of view is a few degrees smaller than, for example, I experienced with my CV1, which irritated me briefly at the beginning. I can't say for sure what exactly that is, but it probably has something to do with the IPD settings as well. But you get used to it very quickly, and if this is your only headset, it will become completely normal for you in an instant. So now to the graphics themselves graphics better processor better display significantly better graphics than my rift cv1 and also as i've heard the quest one there's not much more to say about it as soon as there are dedicated games for the quest 2 you will notice the difference for the first time it doesn't feel like a mobile gaming device but like a wireless pc headset very impressive yeah and what is with the sound and the headset or something? Well, I come from the Rift CV1 and right at the start out of the box there were two fixed headphones designed for 3D sound and they were included, which the delivery of the sound was really good. Deep bass, great high, super satisfying. Maybe I am a little bit spoiled overall. And that was the problem with Quest 2 that worried me the most. To explain that in VR, you exactly have two senses that can be stimulated. One is your eyes and the other one is your hearing. The absence of permanently integrated headphones, but instead two slots that are embedded in the plastic connection part between the headset and the band. Mm, does that sound good to you? Is that enough to forget what's going on around you? I was very skeptical. And that is also one of the criticisms that have only been so, so fulfilled. The sound isn't as bad as I imagined. It's not as bassy as I would like to be. The spatial 3D audio is not as good as it could be. And the ambient noise is, well, coming through stronger than I would have liked. But strangely enough, it's still enough. If you want much better audio, then you simply have to connect your own headphones via the integrated audio pin connector. Pretty simple solution, pretty great. And 
it's absolutely clear to me why Oculus actually prefers the integrated design over everything else. It's cheaper. And cheaper means that the headset is generally more affordable for a lot of more people. This means it's not super bombastic, but it's good enough. And that's the whole theme of the Oculus Quest 2. It's nowhere near the absolute best on the market, but it's good enough. And that brings us to the tracking. Yeah, tracking. The Quest 2 solves the whole problem of building sensors that is known to me by simply installing four small uh, cameras on the headset. These have inside-out tracking, which was unknown to me until then. The entire time that I've had the headset, there have been absolutely no problems with tracking. Neither in menus, nor in apps, or in any games. Sometimes I even have the feeling that it's more precise than my CV1. I don't know whether this has something to do with the fact that the display simply has a higher resolution, and thus I can see more precisely what the movement is, or whether it actually really is. Let's take Beat Saber as an example. I feel it is easier for me to play higher levels of difficulty there without feeling the tracking would somehow fail or distract me. Quite the opposite, actually. And I have to say, I'm I'm not a good Beat Saber player at all, but with Quest 2 it's even more fun than with my CV1. But again, the whole thing is super dependent on the lighting situation in which you are. The better the room is illuminated, the more precisely the headset traces your movements. For me, with my studio lighting setup, everything was absolutely no problem, but whether it works in your dark children's playroom is a matter of actually trying it out. Otherwise, well, just turn on the damn lights. Furthermore, the tracking naturally has problems with 360 degrees movements around your view, as there are no cameras on the back side uh, of the headset. This was solved with the CV1 by, well, installing a third sensor, which was also then set up in a triangular shape with the other sensors. So if you swing your controller over your head or throw it behind your back, then the Quest no longer recognizes your controls and you just have to bring it back to the front absolutely no problem for me and that actually brings me to the biggest point of criticism that I have about the Quest 2. In my opinion the controllers are not as comfortable to hold as the original CV1 controllers. This has nothing to do with the fact that the tracking ring now goes around the top of the wrist and not around the bottom like the first generation. They just feel kind of well weird. Either, it, either they are the big which is already well, some kind of deal breaker or the round surface is weird. I don't know what it is. Um, I just don't like the ergonomics. I can't quite organize it or uh, bring my head around it right now, but my hand feels and starts to cramp uh, around the controllers and that didn't happen with the first version. But what has clearly been improved is the feeling that the controllers give you. The rumble feature and the tactile feedback of the trigger buttons are miles better than my original touches. Everything feels more direct and creepy, and they kind of improved the controller's battery life. I now played it for, let's say, three hours every day for a week, hmm, give or take, and the controllers are still at 100%. Yeah, but, 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 but what if you... Okay, but what if, if you want to use it as this uh, PC Master Race VR desktop computer? Can, can it do that, eh? Uh, yeah, sure, of course. It's somehow nothing else than a normal PC headset. Just plug in a USB-C cable into the headset and the other end to the PC. You don't even have to buy the Oculus Link cable that Oculus has brought to the uh, market, which is offered in the store for super cheeky 99 euros. But, uh, well, if you just get a f another 5 uh, gigabytes per second C2C cable or C2A cable from Anchor for one-fourth of the price, which is absolutely recommended by a lot of people and I've put it down in the description, this is the same cable and it works quite well. Of course you can also use the included charging cable as a link cable, but that could pose a few completely different problems. And now to the absolute best thing that the headset actually makes possible. Playing PC games without cables on the Quest 2 by using a virtual desktop and a LAN. <laughs> Wow, wow, and another wow. It has a little more latency than the standard Oculus Link cable, but that's so unnoticeable that if you didn't know, well, I'm pretty sure you wouldn't notice it. 
Image quality is still the same, tracking feels the same, and all of it is wirelessly via LAN. I think I actually saw the future. And with the rumors that you hear all over the VR forums, Oculus will soon discontinue the Rift S headset and only continue with the Quest series in the future, it actually leads me to speculate that the wireless feature will absolutely be the next generation that comes. To bring the whole thing to a close, the Quest 2 is the best headset for the cheapest price that is currently available. It is not the perfect headset, no, no. It is not the headset with the best tracking or the greatest audio technology, with the most outstanding graphics or the most comfortable head strap, but it's just a headset that does everyone and everything great overall and a few things well actually better than the competition at an absolutely unbeatable price. Only whether you are ready to pay the money and then also give up your data because of a mandatory Facebook account, that is another matter. That's actually why none of the Oculus is currently available in Germany, which they are delivering or they're having a legal dispute with the German government for the purpose of account and legality. It can still be bought through the big orange dealer in France or Austria. If you really want one, that's the way I got mine. So thank you for watching and I hope we will see us in the next video. My name was Leech and I'm off uh, writing the next script. There's a really a big red button down there which I would like you to press so that we can actually see us in the next video. I'm off writing the next script and we'll see us then. Goodbye.